Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to Power Tips. Welcome to Power Tip 56. In this Power Tip, we're going to give you a couple of formulas to estimate the interconnect inductance in PWB traces. In this slide, we'll give you a, a formula to calculate the inductance of a free space conductor. And so it, it's a pretty simple formula. Um, you can see that the inductance is related to the length of the conductor. And then it's related to the logarithm of the length divided by the thickness plus width. Now this is significant in that the logarithm in this expression diminishes the impact of making your trace wider and wider. So down here in this table below, we've calculated the inductance of several typical conductors that you might see in your power supply. The first one is just a 10 mil trace. Um, this 10 mil trace is 2.8 mils thick, or it, it might be called two ounce copper. And so calculating what the inductance of a single inch of this conductor would be, we get about 24 nanny henrys per inch. So you might decide that 24 nanny henrys per inch is too much and you might be interested in reducing it. So one way that you try to reduce it would be to uh, widen the conductor. And so we have gone from a 10 mil wide conductor to a 100 mil wide conductor in the second line, and you can see that it's still a significant amount of inductance. This is 14 nanohenries per inch for a 100 mil wide trace. And the impact of the logarithm is, is kind of interesting too. We've gone 10 to 1 in width on the conductor, and we've only had less than a factor of 2 impact on, on the inductance. And so this final line is what you might do in sheer desperation and putting in a half of inch wide trace in your power supply, the same two ounce copper, and we can see it, it's still sitting about six nano henries of inductance per inch. So we've gone from 24 down to six, and we've changed the width of the conductor by a factor of 50. So that really shows you the, the impact of that logarithm in the expression. That's only a four to one change for a 50 to one change in the width of the conductor. The second kind of trace that we're consider is that we're going to consider a trace that's located over a ground plane. And we'll consider a couple of different options for that trace. But the formulas have gotten a lot simpler. This actually came out of my Fields book from, from when I was in college. So it, it's a pretty familiar formula. So the trace is just simply some constant times the separation between the, the trace and the ground plane divided by the width of the trace. And now this is nice because we've gotten rid of that logarithm in there that diminished the impact of, of the trace width. And we can see that we can drive the trace inductance so arbitrarily small with just wider and wider um, trace widths. And so I put some numbers on this just to give a couple examples. So if we have a trace that's 10 mils over a circuit board, and, and this might be in a multi-layer circuit board that has a width of a tenth of an inch, we can see that we can get the inductance quite low. In, in this case, it's down to uh, half a nanohenry inductance per inch, which is very small. The other calculation it is a little different conductor. It's a conductor that is maybe on the opposite side of a 60 mil thick circuit board with the same tenth inch trace width, and we see that its inductance is about three nanohenries per inch. So these are significantly lower inductances than we were calculating with the single inductor out in space. And so this is one of the reasons that you want to use the ground plane in your circuit board, because it significantly reduces the inductances of your traces. And that impacts noise in the system and it impacts high frequency effect in the conductors. So thank you for your attention. There are more power tips at Power Management Design Line. Search on power tips, or you can click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thank you for your attention.